welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that sorts the facts from the fibs on David Mitchell's team tonight. An Oscar-nominated actor who has starred alongside Tom Cruise and Eddie Redmayne. And here she is, sat next to David Mitchell. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's Samantha Morton. <laughs> A comedian and actor who's so posh he was born with a silver spoon in his butler's mouth. It's Miles Chuck. <laughs> and on Lee Maxine tonight, a man who has just finished filming his latest series about fishing. At the end of the last day, everyone was very emotional, even the fish were gutted. It's Bob Mortimer. <laughs> and uh, an actor who's appeared in everything from Fireman Sam to James Bond. I've always wanted to be him, running around Pontypandy, putting <laughs> fires out. <laughs> it's Sarah Hadland. <laughs> we'll begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Miles is first up tonight. Uh, as a child, my mum got so fed up with me wandering off, she made me wear a bell around my neck whenever we went shopping. Wow. <laughs> Please, Tim. Was she a cow? <laughs> I'm not sure that Miles's mother being a cow would explain it, because I don't think it's the cow's own policy to wear the bells. <laughs> so, first of all, how bad were you at wandering? Was this a regular thing? I wouldn't stay still. Any sort of open space I would see as a thing to run towards rather than... So you know, what was... shopping centres were you going to that were such wide spaces to well, run in? Uh, I suppose uh, Brent Cross Shopping Centre would have been our, our regular haunt. But OK. What age was this? I would have been about probably four to the age of seven. And when you were in infant school, every time you went out to the playground, did everyone think it was playtime over and straight back in again? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was only done on family outings. Only done on shopping days. Shopping okay. Day. And is it a traditional bell with the little thing inside that clanks yeah, against it look the? Like? like a sort of cat spell, essentially. But hang on, there's one massive problem here. A cat is on all fours and the bell dangles. The bell oh, is going to be yeah. touching your body and it won't dangle. Discuss. Well, <laughs> she attached it to a part of me that, that dangled. <laughs> What was the furthest you ever got? What were you searching for? Um, I hope it wasn't sparrows, cos you'd never get them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Brent Cross terms, I, I once got from John Lewis to Phoenix. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> uh, Miles, could I ask you to tell me how big the bell was, but accurately? <laughs> <laughs> Can, I suppose three quarters of the size of a ping pong ball. Hang on. And was it, was it a sphere or bell-shaped? Any bell, by definition, is bell-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Sarah? It sounds a bit draconian, you know, a bell round your child's neck. Yeah, I think it would be a terrible failing of parenting, <laughs> so not for me. It's, it's just not a system that works. If no. you've drifted into a Morris dance area, then you're going to have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. what you'd have in the horror film yeah. version of your life, yeah. where yeah. you yes. run off and then your mother's desperately looking for you and then suddenly she sees a load of Morris dancers and it totally confuses <laughs> the system. Lots of close-ups of grinning Morris dancers. No, no, the Morris yeah. dancers, the Morris dancers. I can't hear Miles' yeah. little tinkling bell. Yeah. Well, yeah. you could be describing any Saturday of my childhood. <laughs> So what are you going to say, Lee? We're not having oh. it. They're not having we're not it. Having They're it. saying it's a lie. Uh, Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Uh, that was a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Miles' mum didn't make him wear a bell around his neck. Sam, you're next. Um. Out loud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when Tom Cruise came to England, I took him to Argos because he wanted to buy an extension need. <laughs> of course, Samantha starred with Sir Thomas in, <laughs> in Minority Report. Mm -hmm. Excellent film. Please, Tim. So, um, why was he coming to London first? It was the premiere. O of Minority Report? Yeah, we we'd taken over this floor of the Dorchester for the premiere. Um, and he's got one end with his entourage and I've got the other end with my child and, and someone helping me. And his, his assistant came over and said, 
they needed uh, an extension lead. You don't know what the lead is for, particularly? Well, I eventually do, but oh, not right, in that sorry. first moment. Oh, OK, no. sorry, what was it? It's rude to ask, as well, when someone says, <laughs> even if it's not Tom Cruise, I'm looking to buy an extension lead, what's it for? <laughs> what, what machine do you need to get nearer to you? <laughs> I definitely think the way you talk, David, it would be rude. <laughs> Basically, we were going out anyway because I needed to get a bottle warmer. And I don't know why, I think I just something came over me. I was like, do you fancy coming what? out with me to Argos? So you end up in Argos with yeah. Tom Cruise. Yes. What did he think of the little pens? <laughs> he probably thought they were massive. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through the bit when you ask Tom. I'll, I'll, I'll be Tom. Um, <clears throat> Hey, Sam! <laughs> really stoked about tonight! <laughs> you know what I learned to do in the last five hours? Fly a helicopter! <laughs> OK, what are we going to do? That was a bit Al Pacino, then. Yeah. It was a bit, wasn't it? It, was it, bit. it, it drifted into... Yeah. What are we going to do tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing Al Pacino. Pacino. <laughs> Brilliant, Thank you, Samantha. I wish I could do Ellen Barkin, but I can't. Oh, Sea of Love. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, this city, what it does to people. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't um, do Ellen Barkin, but I can do Lassie Barkin. <laughs> I was in Lassie. You were in Lassie, the film? Yeah. But oh, I got okay. into trouble with Lassie because they tell everyone no food on set. And I'd forgotten or whatever. And so I'd always be eating my sandwiches, and then Lassie would be doing a take, and then. <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on? And anyway, in the end, they realised it was me and my sandwiches. And then you took Lassie to Argos to buy a lead. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what do you think? Is, well, is I, Sam telling the truth? I, I like it a lot. You like yeah, it? Yeah, it feels like... The well, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bob says it's true. I think so. And Sarah says it's... It's, it's believable. OK. We'll say it's true. You're going to say it's true? OK. Samantha, truth or lie? It's a lie. Ah! <laughs> it was a lie. Sam didn't take Tom Cruise to Argos. Uh, Sarah, you're next. I once spent over an hour trapped in a bin. <laughs> David's team. Why did you get in the bin? Um, because I put something in um, that, and, I, and I needed to get it back. You'd mistakenly thrown something away? Yes. So where was this bin? Um, it was outside my house. Uh, you know, like a big recycling bin. Oh, was it um, a bottle bank, Sarah? Did you climb back in? The... <laughs> <laughs> there was some in there. There was some in there. A little bit left in there. <laughs> so what had you thrown out? By um, some important paperwork. There'd been a pile of recycling and the important, like, tax stuff had got mixed in with it. Right. And so I said to my friend, where's the tax stuff? Why and would your friend know? Because he was um, helping me. Oh, was he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've been out to yeah. put the recycling in the bin. Yeah. You come back in. Gone back. Oh my God! The vital documents quick, aren't there. Quick, get back to the bin. Back out to the bin. It's got right. a slot. Surely I can get in there, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> so you go in. And go in. What happens? Well, I tried to get back out, and my head and my top half got through, but then my the, your hips are the widest part of your body, and I couldn't get those through. So I thought, what if I take off my dungarees and I just had, like, pants and a sports bra on? Um, One but... sad, lonely man in the audience, though. <laughs> oh, yes! Great! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> what a light you get sexy! <laughs> oh, you'll love what's coming up next, sir. <laughs> my friend went back and got some um, body lotion and so I could <laughs> loop myself up. <laughs> So I was more slippy to get. <laughs> um, and then um, he pulled me out and I, I took some skin off my hips, but I oh. got out. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. What are you thinking? There is something about it that does seem true. It does also seem like something that might happen in a, I don't know, a sort of slapstick sitcom. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you don't I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Well, I think we think it's a lie. You're going to say it's a yeah, lie? Yeah. OK. Um, Sarah, truth or lie? It's true. Yeah! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah! Bob, you're next. I once helped Damon Hill to Grand Prix success by presenting <laughs> him 
with a pre-race snack. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> Well, it certainly tripped off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was the snack? A scotch egg. <laughs> and is there a definite correlation between him eating that scotch egg and him being successful? He um, felt that the scotch egg had helped him succeed in the race. He told me so. <laughs> Is Damon Hill a close friend, Bob? No, no. <laughs> then why were you giving him food stuff? <laughs> well, I'd been invited to the Grand Prix. Which Grand Prix? The, the British. In, in, in which year? Think. <laughs> 1996, David, but I'm not willing to exclude four years either side of that. <laughs> Put it this way, it was definitely one of the decades. <laughs> Racing, then? No, I'm not a, a Formula One fan. Right. I probably uh, prefer soil science. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he driving for? He was driving for one, uh, a company um, oh. that had right. very fast company cars. <laughs> Why were you permitted access to a major racing driver? Because his manager, yeah. Yeah, Shane Tobacco... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I can't remember his you name. Can't remember his name. Shane, uh, or whoever it was, was also with another bloke, you know, benefiting from hospitality. What was his name? Let's say Top Heavy Ken. Right. <laughs> I remember we went upstairs on the bus, Damon was there, he had a bed in there. Like a sort of Winnebago. Yeah, and it had, you know, mugs with I love cars, I love, <laughs> I love handbrakes, I love headrests. And this is the day of the race. David, this is just like an hour and a half before the an race. An hour and a half oh, before the race. You've turned up an hour and a half early, cos even though you're more into soil science, you want to soak up the atmosphere <laughs> with a good hour and a half of... Yeah. Waiting before the televised traffic begins. Yes. <laughs> so you turn up. The last thing Damon needs before a race is any quiet time. He just wants a bit of hubbub <laughs> on his bus. Were there any other people there apart from you and Shane and Damon? I was with my wife as well, yeah. OK. Mm. And, um... Top heavy can. <laughs> 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 so me and the wife went up. I think when you go to someone's home or their Winnie Bag or whatever, you should. Do you know, like, if you're going to a dinner party at someone's house, you'll always take them a bottle of vinegar, yeah? <laughs> cool. So your gift to thank him for the hospitality was a scotch egg? No. Oh. I call it pocket meat. Whenever I'm out away from... Whenever I'm away from the house, I have pocket meat. Yeah. That's it. I have, like, a chicken leg <laughs> or pork pie. <laughs> And I thought, I've got some pocket meat. It was a scotch egg in its cellophane. And I said, Damon, we all know that um, if you pop a sausage roll in an American's pocket, it brings him good luck. <laughs> I said, maybe a scotch egg would work for a British fella like you. Is, and I gave it to him. Is that a thing? Yeah, very what, much. What, that so. if you put meat in, a, in an American's pocket? It's processed Have meat. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> not, not really, no. No. It's all been a bit of a lot of talking. <laughs> 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 I've forgotten the original bit of the story. Did he eat said scotch uh, egg before uh, the race? I, I'll Did never you? know, Samantha, but after the race, he said that he took the scotch egg round with him. He swore he did. In the I, car? I don't know whether he put it in the glove box on the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, Bob, you're not claiming that he ate the egg. All I'll say is, is that when I was watching, when, when Damon went past, in his tailwind, a person next to me said, Damon's tailwind smelt really meggy, which, of, co <laughs> which of course, is meat and egg. Meat and egg. <laughs> so, what, what are we thinking, Sam? Do you know what? Sometimes stories are so mad that they've got to be true. What I would say here is be wary when it comes to Bob. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you remember, David, that I think it was the last time Bob was with us, he told us Chris Rea told him he yeah. put an egg into his bath. I can't even remember. Was mm. that true? No. But you believed it was true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, what are you thinking? Well, I'm... I think that you're sort of somewhat cynically using this as an opportunity to tout your 
kind of charms. <laughs> and you're hoping to kind of drum up work and then your agent's going to get lots of phone calls saying, well, would Bob Mortimer be able to sort of slip Gareth Bale a pasty and stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie, but you think it's true. I'm on the fence. Oh, dear. This is a horrible situation. I don't know. My instinct is it's a lie. You're saying lie? OK, yeah. Bob Mortimer. Uh, a lucky scotch egg for Damon Hill at the British Grand Prix. <laughs> truth or lie? <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> One egg thing's true, the other egg thing. How can I have disbelieved the wrong egg thing? <laughs> so, so obviously, what they'd make up some random thing about an egg and a long departed 90s celebrity. <laughs> Is he dead? He's not, no, he's not dead. He's just, you never hear from him. What does Damon Hill do now? He's probably into soil science. <laughs> <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Lucy. <laughs> so, Sam, what is Lucy to you? So, this is Lucy. And uh, last year, her pig delivered my Christmas card. <laughs> Miles, how do you know Lucy? Uh, this is Lucy. I know Lucy. Uh, when I had to have an, uh, an intimate medical examination, I inadvertently brought her with me. <laughs> uh, David, what is your relationship with Lucy? This is Lucy. Together, we discovered that I have the hearing of a rat. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, where do you want to start? I'll start with Sam. How do you know this lady? Um, she lives in my village, or where I used to live. OK. And is she a farmer? Yes. Right. Did her pig deliver your Christmas card from her, or did her pig deliver your Christmas card to somebody else? No, <laughs> her pig delivered the Christmas card that was for me to me. To you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to say the joke or not? Did the pig have it in its little snout? Because if it did, wouldn't it have got very wet? Because pig snouts are very wet. Are they? Yes. You never kissed a pig? <laughs> very <laughs> wet. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um... It actually takes a while to get used to. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, you get a little dog, um, a little harness. Little harness. Oh, the Christmas card harness. <laughs> it is a harness. Yeah. Like you would have a lead on a dog oh, and the right. cards were there. Slid under the harness. Yeah. How far is your house from her house? About two miles. Two miles. But the pig hasn't walked two miles. The pig has been driven to the village and then off the pig trots. <laughs> and um, I was doing Christmas. It was Christmas, right, dinner. This Christmas Day? Yes. It's a bit late for Christmas cards, Christmas Day. Well, that's why they yeah, have to resort to delivery village. by pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm washing the pots, da -da -da -da, looking out the window, really lovely day, beautiful, beautiful. And I, I see Barry, the pig. Barry? Barry, <laughs> the pig is called Barry. So you've met Barry before? Yeah, everyone knows Barry. Barry goes to the pub and everything. <laughs> and oh, so oh. Barry's... I hope he doesn't have the port scratchings. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's oh, really oh, horrible. Oh, it's like that going, tastes like my brother Pete, this. <laughs> <laughs> No, anyway, so he's <laughs> toddling along, and um, I'm like, oh, oh, hope he's all right. So I go out <laughs> to check he's all right. Did you just talk us through how you did that again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the pig go after you'd taken the cow? I picked pig up, cos he's only little. Pot-bellied pig. I think I've read recently that there's no such thing as a miniature pot-bellied pig. All there is is little pigs that are young. I know a rescue centre that takes loads of pigs because yeah. people have sold them as potbelly pigs and they're not. George yeah, you have to be careful with that, though, because they can grow to be really enormous and people think they're really cute and little and all the rest of it. Yeah, but that's the same with kids, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK. okay. Who would you like to question next? Um, sorry, Miles, can you remind me? Uh, yeah, when I had to have uh, an intimate medical examination, I inadvertently brought uh, Lucy with me. OK. Tell us about the medical examination. Right, well... <laughs> what about on your body? Yeah. Well, it was an intimate medical examination, so already I suspect your, 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 your options are limited. <laughs> I, 
Um, I'm going to go in the bottom area. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to choose front or back. Um... <laughs> this reminds me of the conversation we had the first time we met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it back? So, so, it was back. It was back. Yes, yes. It was back. the back... Back uh... bottom. Basically, I was working, yes. and, and, and then when I got to work, I felt ill. Right. And uh, so I needed to go to hospital. There was pains down below. Yes. And Lucy, very kindly, rang uh, NHS Direct for me. Right, who is Lucy? Why? Lucy was a colleague. What situation were you in at this time? So I was uh, rehearsing a play. OK, and is Lucy an actor? No, Lu Lucy is... Uh, uh, she does the technical stuff. She's a sta stage manager. This could be true, because I don't think Miles was quite sure what she does for a living. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but when I say cappuccino, it arrives. Um... <laughs> And so the NHS Direct said, right, you, you, you need to go to the nearest hospital. Mm -hmm. And the reason that Lucy came with me to the hospital is because the thing that I was rehearsing was a play that only had me in. And so Lucy was told to go with me so that we could run uh, the lines. What was the play? It was a one-man play that I was in. The Downpipe Blues. It was called... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was called um, uh, The Life I Lead. So what happens? You get to the hospital. So we go, we go to the hospital and we're sitting in the rating room and someone comes and says t to us, because we're sitting next to each other, C can you come in now? So we just do as we're told and we get up and we go in. And so I, I thought that must be what's meant to happen. They say they spoke to, to both of us. That's the problem with having the same word for you singular and you plural. <laughs> we should go back to thou. <laughs> <laughs> So we went in and the doctor, she says, I've got to examine you, so what you need to do is take your pants and your trousers off, get up onto that bed there, turn onto your side so your back is facing me. And I went, OK. And at that point, Lucy went, I really don't think I'm meant to be in here. <laughs> and, and the doctor, she said, no, it's absolutely fine for partners to be here. And she went, I'm not, not his partner, I'm his colleague. <laughs> and that's when Lucy uh, left the room and the examination reached its very happy conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> What about, what about David? Just remind us, David. Um, th this is Lucy, and, and together we discovered that I have the hearing of a rat. <laughs> oh, yeah. How did this get discovered? Well, in uh, our house, we were wondering for some time if there might be some mice about. I'd seen a mouse outside, and I think my wife had sort of wondered whether she'd sensed some scurrying, but it you was probably... You weren't staying at Disneyland, were you? It wasn't a seven-foot person with a French accent again, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, I then went away for a couple of days for work. OK. Um, which I occasionally get. <laughs> I then returned home late one night and went into the kitchen and I could hear a distinct, high-pitched... And I went out of the kitchen, and it stopped. And I went into the kitchen, and I could hear it. And I thought, is there something wrong with me, other than the, the usual? <laughs> and I wonder, is it something weird that the fridge is doing? Or the wine fridge? Yes, we're doing OK. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the dishwasher? <laughs> it's like a dream come true. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I'm not sure. I asked my wife about it, and, and it turns out she's bought something, which is a plug-in um, mouse-scaring noise machine. And it was the frequency that was being emitted by this plug-in machine. And it should be inaudible to humans. It should be inaudible to humans. And wh um, where does Lucy come into this story? Well, I mentioned it to my doctor, and they said I should have a hearing test, because it's an unusual... Thing, yeah. and I wouldn't want to only hear things that rats and mice could hear. <laughs> uh, so I went to, a, uh, to have my ears tested uh, yes. by, by Lucy. Nothing and, else, uh, though? I mean, if, if the dog whistle went off in the park, would you hear it? I d well, I don't know. <coughs> I, I heard that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what frequency that None was. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, oh, well, that's, that's <laughs> Did you hear anything? Yeah. Hear anything? Did you hear it? I didn't hear anything. No, there was a little sort of rodenty sneeze there <laughs> that, that Rob did. Um, which probably only I can hear. I like to think it's, it's a superpower, really. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. Lee's team is Lucy, Sam's farmyard friend, Miles's checkup chum, or David's ear expert? It's Ma Miles for me, Lee. You? Miles? Yeah, because I have so many problems with my bottom. Yeah. <laughs> that 
I walk into the doctor's surgery like this, and he just <laughs> says, Hello, Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> You say it's miles. For me, yeah. Have you had similar examinations? Every single week. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sarah? Who are you going to say? Oh, Sam. Sam, for you. I'll go miles. You say it's miles. I think it might be miles. Okay, uh, Lucy, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Lucy, and Miles took me to his <gasps> intimate examination. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Lucy is Miles's chuck-up chum. Thank you very much, Lucy. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies. We start with... <laughs> Lee. Because I kept losing my bin shoes, I've now tied them to my hall radiator with a length of elastic. They comfortably stretch to the end of the drive before the tension beckons me back. <laughs> David's team. When you put said bin shoes on your feet, yeah. you're still tied to the radiator. Technically, but they're very elasticated, so it doesn't feel that way. You said when you get to the end of the drive, the tension of the elastic beckons you back. Talk us through that procedure. Well, I start walking, so it, it starts off... Uh, I've got a wheelie bin. Yes, of yeah, course. And I'm wheeling Just my... one? One wheelie bin, one recycling bin, okay. but we alternate each week. I mean, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's blue. I obviously play the game of putting the wrong colour out to see if the neighbours will copy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it first and then look, everyone copies you. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sneak out at night, swap it back again. <laughs> I'm a horrible man. <laughs> uh, so you get the bin, so I start walking like this. Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm just taking it all in. Go on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> We've had a lot of female guests. You're the first one who's ever said that to me. <laughs> so I walk out and everything's fine, everything's fine. Just walking, walking. Oh, I'm feeling a bit of... Bit of te Ooh, hello. Hello. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> is that elastic tighter than you thought? No, just the bin was heavier than I yeah. thought. <laughs> 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 Why don't you just use string? Because if you use string, when it comes back, it's everywhere. If you use elastic, it gathers up into a smaller space. But after a while, it all goes baggy. Well, that's just well, life, isn't that's it? Life. <laughs> <laughs> What, what are you going to say, David? <laughs> what do you think, Sam? I think it's a lie. OK, Miles. I think it's a, a lie. I mean, I'm sure you've got a pair of bin shoes, but I think this, <laughs> this seems like a step too far. I think we're going to say it's a lie. saying it's a lie. Yes, OK, yeah. Lee, was it true or was it a lie? It was, in fact, a lie. <laughs> well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team have two points. Lee's team has four points. Oh. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.